Alright, so we got some massively hyped news on what's coming for the part 2 of the 4th anniversary celebration. And my god, I couldn't believe my eyes when I actually saw this. I'm unfortunately recording this a couple of hours too late because of course the news always drops when I'm at work. That's just the way it is, I live in Europe. You know, that's my work schedule. I can't really do anything about it. But that's not gonna stop me from actually talking about it. And hopefully you'll enjoy what I have to say. So, we got Tristan. <laughs> my god, and I wasn't expecting Tristan at all. Well, maybe just a little bit. They did tease him in one of the cards for the card sets. I'm gonna try to find it. So pretty much in this card set right here, you can see Tristan over here. It's a little bit blurry. Uh, maybe if I go in game, I can show you better. But you know what? It, it's Tristan. We, we kind of knew this was sort of a Bond and Elaine themed thing. But for some reason, they sort of added Tristan there. And I mean, it is what it is. Maybe maybe it was like a hint that we're gonna get Tristan. I also noticed in like one of the event towers, not the latest one that we got today on Global, I believe. But on the previous one, we got on the previous patch on I believe floor 15 they had a thing where you had to have like a team of only fairy allies and you would get like a massive stat boost or whatever but the specific passive for that floor stated like fairy allies or units with like a passive which makes them fairies not in exactly those words but you know what I mean and I was like holy shit are they just gonna sneakily drop a Lancelot unit <laughs> I guess if you don't know Lancelot is both a fairy as well as a human so he has like two things there and he would of course have a passive which makes him both similar to what Sigurd has where he's both a human and his passive also makes him a demon right but now back to the news here of course i wasn't expecting tristan really i wasn't like the card set is one thing i didn't expect them to actually hint on actually dropping a tristan unit i thought at least a couple of months left before we would actually see a tristan maybe once it actually catches up to the story but i guess this is the tristan not from the ending of the manga or the anime of seven deadly sins but rather from the movie i feel like this is the movie tristan so does that mean we're gonna start seeing like a movie death pierce or whatever other characters we saw in that film maybe i mean we are seeing arthur here he is a human buffer also we're gonna go over for what they do in just a moment here but yeah this has me so hyped honestly like i'm cautiously optimistic on how the units will actually perform i'll just say that right now but i do have hopes for it at least so exactly what tristan does is well we will go over his passive at the end but he has a single target stun card similar to goddess liz he also has a cleanse card that gives you solidify buffs so basically blue liz hawk i believe it is and he has lost veins ultimate so a secret technique ultimate that deals a additional damage based on like how many cards you have in his hand and it's always hits as if it is a type advantage attack right that's some fairly decent okay-ish cards like it's nothing crazy but his passive is where it's at because he is an unknown unit as you can see but his passive makes it so that for every demon ally on the team increases demon allies tech related stats by three percent that's not so great <laughs> Honestly, that part is very bad because he's not a demon. And if you're going to use a unit that's not a demon, you might as well use Ragnarok Ban in the back because he's going to give you 10% attack related stats rather than 9%. I mean, that's just a no brainer, right? And you will be able to get Ragnarok Ban for free if you don't have him from the new Hawkbox jump event, as you can see here. He's free. <laughs> We'll go over that in just a moment here as well, but the second part is where he might be broken or there might be some diminishing returns. I'm not holding my breath, but I am like cautiously optimistic. And the second part is for every goddess ally on the team increases goddess allies defense related stats by 15%. Now that's going to be up to 45% defense related stats. That's defense, crit resistance, crit defense and resistance. And that's a lot. Like Nanashi is like a backline unit for the goddesses, right? He gives you 20% HP, 40% crit resistance and 40% crit defense. As well as like 20% defense, right? And 20% resistance. And of course, whenever you're attacked, he removes an all gauge orb from the enemies. I mean, I think only once per turn. But it doesn't apply to all allies. Basically, in a 3v3 situation, it's only gonna be on two allies. Maybe sometimes even on just one ally. And while I think Nanashi doesn't suffer from diminishing returns as much as just having like defense related stat increase would, because HP could potentially do so much more as well, you know, as adding into your like overall survivability. But I don't think we should discount this unit just yet he could potentially as sora mentioned on twitter make blue tarmel an absolutely broken unit like if you just make a proper team for him that could be something really crazy because blue tarmel is of course based on defense it's gonna be 45 percent increase to tarmel's defense very nice honestly we'll just have to see and we're just gonna have a look at his special move so uh, actually don't have sound on that <laughs> so that is his secret technique aoe ultimate and we see Liz there and Melee. Is that really the ultimate? 
<laughs> I have a hard time feeling that that's the ultimate. All right. Um, but next up, we got Arthur, and Arthur is, of course, a human buffer. So he's going to increase all human allies' HP by 10% for every human ally on the field. And then every time he stands us up, one debuff is removed from all allies. And each debuff on the allies, and I don't believe this is debuffs removed, but debuffs that are on the allies, increases Arthur's crit defense by 5% up to 10 times, so up to 50%. That could be crazy because he does have a taunt card here. It's basically Blue Rebrew's taunt card. So he's basically going to taunt off for two turns and heal for 50% of his max HP. I believe that's what it does. Maybe it does something else as well. And then he has an old gauge remover card that on level 3 removes 3 old gauge orbs. And the same ultimate. And of course the same holy relic. So the holy relic is going to work nicely with him because he's still going to be a tank character. He's still going to increase your HP by 20%. Give himself a bunch of crit resistance so he won't be crit as much as like the other Arthur is. And I guess we'll just have to see his stats in order to determine exactly how good he's going to be. Because this is a single target card. And maybe he can work with Roxy if he has enough crit chance because he's also an Arthur character you can slap on a green Merlin link that's gonna increase his crit chance by another like 19 point something percent I mean it could be viable and let's, let's just look at his costume piece here because man that actually looks nice I'm really really impressed by how, how good that looks Yeah, well, honestly, I was expecting something much worse when I when I saw this image, but looking at the 3D model here, that looks so sick. Like, man, look at that. All right. So those are the two new units. The banner itself isn't anything to hang in the tree. Tristan is going to be a seasonal unit, it appears, because he's surrounded by, of course, seasonal units. And Arthur, for some reason, Arthur isn't a seasonal unit, right? And neither is Melly. I don't know, but there's a bunch of seasonal units here. I do need Slater, so I'm, of course, going to summon on this banner irregardless. But if I can get Slater, that would make me one step closer to actually having all the units. And I would only be missing Jenna, which is also a seasonal unit, but unfortunately not on this banner. But the banner itself is trash, and I'll probably make like a video if you should summon or not, or whatever, as it gets closer to global and as we see like what he actually does on JP. So do look forward to that. There are, of course, quite a lot of more events. They appear to have added some knighthood content here, which you can get some points and stuff like that, or coins or whatever these are, and you can spend them on, well, some goodies from like the boxes and stuff. So that's kind of nice. The top 100 PvP mode is back, and you can get Guild Thunder this time if you score in the top 100. Of course, there's some new packs available as well. We're not gonna look into them too much here they do reset some of the mid appears but yeah so we're getting a login bonus for the second part of the hawk jump box tickets which is kind of nice and in those tickets you're gonna be able to get valenti ragnar ban red thonar as well as two costume pieces one for elaine one for ban and then arthur of course as like the final reward these are the step ups so you're gonna be able to get some more nice gear pieces gear sets and stuff like that really good to up your account box cc of course there's gonna be missions there as well so you can get one ur pendant as well as one free multi on on the Tristan banner. That's kind of nice. Uh, the Twee God event, whatever this is, they talked about it or they teased it or whatever. And it appears you can get some goodies from here. That's kind of nice. And there's a step up thingy. Light behind gets a new costume piece. It looks sick. Like the weapon looks sick. It was a candles. And I'm not a fan of his haircut, but the costume looks kind of dope. And the weapon, yeah, it's so good. And we get a rerun of the seasonal costumes here as well. Some of them look so good. So yeah, do get them. I do believe. Uh, yeah, they're only purchasable by money, it seems. Oh, that's a little bit unfortunate. All right, then we're going to skip that. <laughs> <laughs> and the return of the final boss Meliodas and Elizabeth is back with the added challenge mode difficulty or whatever the highest difficulty is. We can get like the gold tokens and it appears from the placement rewards you will be able to get the Elizabeth costume and from the shop you will be able to buy Meliodas costume. And in order to get like the entire costume you don't even need to grind out the highest difficulty if you can't like beat it because you can just get like the silver coins grind it out for as much as you can then exchange the silver coins into gold coins and then buy this costume piece if you want like all the costume pieces so that is pretty nice there as well and we're also getting the final event boss parade boss or whatever it's called this fat guy here it should still be the same step of rewards but there's some new things to buy in the exchange shop so that's kind of nice there's not really too much to talk about here there's some quality of life updates i think i don't know what this is like reach 3000 points when had you ever had to reach oh that's just the next reward i guess or what what is this is this either 6000 or 9000 points was, was this 3000 points or do you get like one extra if you complete like 3k points through the individual and weekly rewards to make them easier to understand yeah th this this just confused me <laughs> 
<laughs> more than anything <laughs> and there's some bug fixes and of course buying a change but for this one i'll have to like wait for like a proper translation to actually translate it if you have one like do let me know and we'll have a look at it sometime but from what i've heard from people saying it looks kind of mediocre but he went from like a seven deadly sins buffer to working with not only seven deadly sins units but humans as well as fairies so honestly the more possibilities it opens up the better i feel like that's going to be at least a little bit interesting so yeah but with that i think Think that concludes the patch notes here massive news let me know in the comments like is this a big w or is it a massive l personally i feel like this is a w because of course we're getting two new units in the same patch very nice you might have to wait a little bit to actually get arthur unless of course you get really lucky on the hawk jump box ticket event and tristan of course only summon on him if you kind of want to summon on him i'm pretty sure it's not gonna be the most broken unit ever but it is a tristan unit and it's very interesting that we're getting him so early i thought that at the earliest we would get him maybe Maybe October, November, sometimes around the time of the, like the half any festival or whatever, just before the New Year's, which I feel like might even be a Four Nights of the Apocalypse festival or something. Like it could, of course, be just another like Meliodas festival for New Year's, but it could also be a festival Tristan, like Meliodas' son. But I guess only time will tell. It's kind of nice that we actually got that. And I'm also super hyped for Arthur. I want to try him out. Let's go. <laughs> But yeah, I think with that, that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a most wonderful rest of your day. And yeah, I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.